Hello and welcome to another Let's Play of Star Drive 2 brought to you by Explorminate.com. I am Rob, aka Devil Dog, and I am going to be taking you through at least a few episodes of Star Drive 2, and more episodes are going to kind of depend on you, the viewer, because <laughs> as it turns out, I'm trying to convince Zero that a full play, uh, Let's Play won't spoil anything. So. If you guys wouldn't mind uh, hitting the like button below, leaving a comment saying you want some more of this Let's Play series, that'll help me convince Dan DeChico, aka Zero, the developer behind Star Drive 2, that you want more, that you want to see this, that a few episodes is just a tease. So, if you don't though, let that be known too. If you don't want to be spoiled, please, by all means, let us know, because either way, I mean, I, I don't want to go outside my boundaries and I certainly want to bring you what you guys want so let's get started campaign um, the resounding choice for people was either the humans or the chuck I'm gonna go with the chuck uh, we can take a look at customizing um, just a quick heads up there two negative traits are poor homeworld which negative one production per worker which is kind of you know it's, it's a bit of a hit and repulsive which means our relations start at negative 25 with other alien races so, we can come in here to customize this, and as you can see where they're actually already clicked based on their build. So, we are fertile, we'll gain 50% 50, 50 population, wait, we'll gain population 50% faster, <laughs> that's better. Um, and then we come down here and we're also good space fighters, we're repulsive as I was saying. We're subterranean so we actually have more space on our population. And, or I'm sorry, on our planets. We have more space for our population on planets, and then we also have a poor home world. Um, we can't actually take that out, can we? So, maybe we could do. Um, no, we don't want to do low G home world, because poor home world is, is uh, the negative one production, but if we do low G, then that drops it all the way down to negative 25%, which is obviously much more. We don't want. Reckless polluters. I want to show you guys spies if that gets the time. We get the time to do that, so I don't really think that clumsy spies would be great. Although I don't usually use spies, so why don't we do this? Why don't we do clumsy spies and take out poor homeworld? And we'll leave that. That'll give us some space for a rich homeworld. Because I'm not a big espionage guy, so let's do that. Um, we'll take on the rich homeworld. Alright, so now we've got this. We can actually call them something else. Uh, we can call them now. Let's call them Rich Chuck. Oops, that's Cook. <laughs> Chuck, there we go. All right, so we'll save them as the Rich Chuck, as they have the Rich Home World. So, excellent. Let's go ahead and start. We've got their um, default color. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave the leader name as Devil Dog, cause hell yeah. Um, and everything else will be default. I will default the system count just to kind of give you a feel for it. And everything else will be default as well. Um, I can choose my opponents if I wanted to do something like that. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I want to be surprised. So, and we will random my personalities because people have asked me to do that. So, otherwise, they'd play true to their lore, which is basically, you know, like the Kilrothi or the. The bears, I should say, the space bears, uh, act as they would normally, like an honorable race that they are, and you know the chuck would be assholes, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and randomize that just to kind of, ah, uh, you know what? No, let's leave it off. We're gonna do it exactly how it's supposed to be played. We haven't touched anything here in the screen, um, other than let's do this. Let's add an, another opponent or two, and make it a little bit crowded. All right, so the chuck of fusion does a load faster than that. And let's go. Welcome to Star Drive 2. So, uh, what I will start off by doing is coming in Chol. And you guys have probably seen a lot of the beta footage. Not much has changed with this particular screen. We'll go ahead and start it off with... There's a few things I can do here. I can either start setting up a freighter fleet because there's a possibility that I'll colonize a planet that doesn't have like great food production. Um, I can go with a construction ship so that I can expand my horizons by um, expanding my my range, building um, refueling 
stations and stuff like that. Or I can start building another explorer to kind of maybe go in the opposite direction the other one's going. Or I can start building any of the uh, interceptor ships or anything like that to kind of fend off what may or may not end up coming. I'm going to go with the explorer because I want to go ahead and explore as fast as I can. And usually exploring stuff and getting out as fast as you can will end up finding me a good planet, you know? So um, everything else appears to be good. We're on a rich homeworld, which is great. So we'll see that right there, the second one. Planetary base rich, so we'll be producing more than we would normally produce, which is very good. We'll also slide one of these guys here. Oh, look at that. Let's not do that. <laughs> I think that's because the turn hasn't played yet, so we'll see that in just a second change. Alright, so we'll take our starting fleet here, and this is our exploration frigate. We can expand out, kind of take a look at what's going on around us, and even farther out. We will send him northward, or upward, I guess. There's no real north or anything. And once we build the other one, we'll send that one down. We can, however, take the colonization ship and send him south. Yep, yeah, alright, sorry, I just want to make sure we were good. Alright, cool, so we'll send him down to this one. And because it's in our territory, it's very unlikely that we'll find pirates or anything like that. So, let's choose research. Um, couple ways we could start this off by either taking aeroponic farm or any of these uh, either of these I should say um, or either of these they're pretty much a good standard go-to beginning research technologies to take I'm gonna take automated river bay because I like the plus five flat production bonus um, which means I don't have to m move my people into the production line to be to be producing more at that planet so automated river bay it is we're doing it Okay. Wait, is that a planet right there? Oh my god, it's totally a planet. I didn't say it. Okay, there. So, um, yeah, as you can see as I mouse over it, food per farmer is zero, production per worker is three, research per scientist is two. Not probably our best second planet, although that planet is a decent planet if you, you know, are out of space later on. But you want to get a planet that produces food on its own so that you don't have to shuttle food there, if you can. So, we've got that going. Um, the only other thing that we can take a look at is whether or not we want to... Uh, whoops. No, well actually, we'll wait on that. So, we'll leave it at there. We'll go ahead and hit turn. And we've also got an event that just popped up. Super sweet. Super sweet, yo. And, oh, look at that. A system of gas giants. How awesome. Not. Alright, let's take our scout, see what the event here is. We can click on him, and we'll see that there's ancient androids there. So we gain two android citizens when colonizing this planet. We've got helium-3, which gains 10% um, fuel efficiency per, for per source. So that's pretty good. Um, but it obviously won't have... Yeah, it won't have any food per farmer. So having ancient androids there is definitely a boon. So we will keep him there until we find something better. And what we may do, depending on... Actually, no, we'll leave it at Automated River, River Bay. We'll come back to Chular. Chul. And now that we can see... Okay, this isn't actually working just yet. So we need, we're probably going to need another citizen before we can start divvying up people. But I would like to maybe produce or put someone else into research so that we can research faster. We're 17 turns away from automated river bay. Boo. All right. And there we go. So this is the Im the mysterious asteroid event. I don't have the money or the um, freighters to do anything with it just yet. So I'm going to leave it as the asteroid alone for now until I can get either money or some freighters. But it's probably less likely to end up being a freighters event for me, I'm gonna probably end up needing the money. The BC. Alright. We'll send him up here. I don't want to use this guy to explore because there are a lot of monsters and space pirates and all that stuff. And hello. Alright, so that's your friendly your news robot. 
um, and he updates you on basically all the various aliens as you go through, and also tells you when people go to war and stuff like that. Um, pretty sure if you've seen the last stream we had, he was in it by then. So this one has one food per farmer, which is enough to get us going, but it's not enough for me to be excited about it. So we'll send him over this way. It's a good idea to keep your eye on the ship and its sensor range, which is this yellow dot circle run, as it gets closer because you'll start to see, there we go, see? Perfect timing. You'll see that you're about to come up on a lone pirate, which means you don't want to go that route because as a uh, scout ship, you're not going to be able to take on said spire, or said spirit, spirit, spirit ship, spirit ship. So that's what they're going to be called from now on, spirits. So you don't want to, you want to worry about the pirates and the lobsters and all that. So just keep an eye on them as they get closer to the, the planet systems there. Mm. Oh wait, oh, I didn't even see that. I should have been paying attention. All right, so now we've got the other exploration ship that we can start moving around to. All right, good. So, so there we go, another event. And Arborg is now scouted out. It's got a nice little asteroid there. Um, all right, so we've got a medium. Oh yeah, ultra toxic. Blah blah blah. Ain't happening. So we know that. It's very likely that there isn't any pirates in this system because our scanning range is already pretty much encompassing that. All right, we can also just click here. Uh, medium radiated, man. So you know what I'm gonna do because I don't like wasting time not having a second planet up. We're gonna do this Tundra planet with the Bakta root. And the Bakta root, what does it do again? It's plus two, plus point two population growth. Awesome. So, perfect. All right. So the uh, infested derelict. We're gonna come back to that once we have some ground forces. May not be within this let's play if there's not enough people telling me that I should make another let's play. <laughs> I need to convince zero. All right. So there are, I think there's two groups of people, like two groups of people that understand Let's Plays, that like really truly look at Let's Plays for what it is, um, which is basically like a, like a gameplay preview, and then others that kind of see them as a bit of a spoiler. And obviously Zero falls into the second category, which is perfectly fine, I just, I fall into the, the former category where I feel like it's a great gameplay preview, gets you really hyped up. All right, so now we've got the automated rover bay. Perfect. We're gonna go to Chular, and we're gonna build it. And now we've got more people, so we're gonna go ahead and start shuffling a couple of them over this way. Oh, we don't want to go see that too far. All right, we're gonna shuffle just the one because that'll give us a nine turn on r the automated rover bay we want to go ahead and choose research which I believe should be the aeroponic farm or the soil enrichment I'm gonna do the aeroponic farm because it's plus three food per turn to the colony without needing any sort of you know farmers <laughs> anybody to actually be there working on it so that'll be great because we can come down here and take on the ancient androids plant down there all right so we can come take a look at see what oh man all these gas giants although there is the Ugerman belts with the uh the pretty little asteroids. Ah, oh, that's so good. Pa look at the production level there. It's eight. I've seen it as high as nine. I don't think there's anything higher than nine. All right, we'll send him over that way. So that might be an asteroid belt we could take here in a little while. Yes, we will confirm. And we'll build the automated rover bay. And in order to actually build it, we're going to need to build freighters so that we can send that one farmer to the production line. So, 
Set up the freighter. Let's see how much is up. It's going to be 200 BC to rush, and I only have 121, as you can see. Oh. Alright, so. We've got Rembao, Grizzledowalk. He's got a unique ship. He is a warrior, so he likes the ground combat. He is a combat veteran, so he will participate in ground combat. And uh, he's likable, so people like him. It helps me with my diplomatic arrangements. Arrangements. Alright, alright, man, you got yourself a deal. Now uh, I'm gonna be at the canteen until you need me. Try not to need me, you know. I need you if I need you. Alright. So now, I don't know if you heard this, hostile fleet spotted on our space. That's a result of the fact that our um, borders have grown, and now there is a crystal fleet. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's a crappy crystal fleet to have so close to us. It's a good thing we know where it's at. And then we have this lone pirate, which we could take rather easily. <laughs> but this one, oh man, not so much. Not so much. Alright, so we'll right-click those, take them, put them away. Um, and then how far are we out from our automated... Okay, six turns. Perfect. So, just go ahead and hold space down for a few turns. Oh, we should also send him back out. So, we'll send him out to... He'll come over here. Oh, great. Uh, so he's actually out of gas. Out of fuel, I should say. And he's being chased by some pirates, which means they're probably going to catch up to him. Yeah, they're going to catch up to him. Alright, so we've completed the automated river bay. We're five turns away from our freighter fleet. Once the freighter fleet's done, we can um, actually build something at Itania. And what we'll do is we'll fight them and then attempt to run away. So, uh, let's see how it works. Alright, so... Run away! Retreating 23, 24, 24, 24, come on, come on, come on, go, 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 go. As you can see, the little fighters. And they're already firing off some rockets. Uh oh. I think the fighters will catch up, but it won't be enough to destroy my ship. Yep, sweet. So. I got out of there. Thankfully. They're, they're still going to be chasing me too. Alright, so this is just a, an event telling me that there are pirates in the area. Oh no! It's gonna, they're going to catch up again. Hopefully they'll turn around. Just turn, turn around. Ah, oh, there we go. Good. Alright, we won't have to run away again. Freighter, free, freighter, freighter fleet. Man, I can't speak. Freighter fleet. One turn. Alright, so now we can move over to Atenia. And work this guy over here. And as you can see, food imports under flu, uh, flat food modifiers is because I'm actually going to be bringing in from um, Chol with my freighter fleet. So, come back here. And, you know, it's probably a good idea to build, well, there's two things. Let's go ahead and build the colony ship and get those ancient androids down here in Adro. Then we're going to need to start building some military ships so we can take out these pirates, pirates. Alright, so we've got, alright, so the crushes, the, the space lobsters, they're hanging out over there. Hey man, uh, I got some shit that we need to deal with, man. <laughs> All right, I need you to deal with, man. And it'd be cool if you could help me, you know. Or yeah, whatever. So uh, I don't know if I told you how I got freed ever. I was on a mission for one of the the eyeballs to pick up some black market chemicals out of Port Soro, some sort of eye drops or something. <laughs> Why do I sound like a hick? <laughs> Anyways, you're when you're on the juice, man. When you're on the eye juice, you don't care about nothing, man. They pump you up. You get kind of dumb, you go do what you gotta do, and you don't think about it too hard. But there was this other all-walk man. He threw some sort of spice in my face, some sort of powder or something, and all of a sudden, boom, clarity, freedom. He told me I'd owe him a favor and would contact me. So, uh, long story short, the birds contacted me. I'll send you the details right now, help a feather out. Okay. 
I'm going to go ahead and just hit sounds like a plan. If you have the desire to read the paragraph that I just skipped over, so be it. But I don't want to spoil too much. So as a result, I won't be doing that particular event. Unless people are like, oh my god, do the event. And then I'll do the event. But in the interest of um, adhering to Zero's wishes, I will not. All right. So that's where the event is, by the way. You can see the little ramble rally point in that little crazy section of stuff. Not going to do it. Not until I say. I, not until people say I should. All right. Where's a good place for him to go? Let's go to a tenue with him and then go straight out and see if we can. Because that way we can avoid this pirate. And as you can see, my freighters are moving. Scouts have arrived at the Yamiya system. Man, there's nothing around me. I always get screwed on, on LPs. Alright, so we know that... No, no, we don't know anybody's there. But I will watch. Keep an eye on that range. And there's another event. And Lois. Alright, still nothing. Jeez. I think Dan figures out a way to... to program this so that when someone's LPing it or streaming it, their like immediate surroundings suck. Alright, so Atenian and we'll bring him up over here. And how far are we out from the colony ship? Twelve turns. And we can click on here and then click these arrows to see how they're doing. Eighteen, jeez. But we can actually almost buy it, so we'll probably do that just to speed up progress there at Atenya. How is that finding me? Oh, I know. Oh, I wasn't watching. I wasn't watching. Let's, I, I'm going to blow up. There's no doubt. These guys are super fast and they're also relatively close too. So, um, yeah, we're going to die. See, they're already like a quarter of the way. Shoot me with their little lobster missiles. I hate you, lobsters. Alright. Well, that wasn't terribly great. And then I'm about to get intercepted by pirates. My freighter is, at least. Yikes. Oh, and I need to run away from that one, too. That's another crystal fleet. God, I am just surrounded by them. So... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm aggroing everything. Alright, um, this pirate fleet. And this pirate fleet. And this crystal fleet. Seven turns away. It's too close to redirect, because I do need some military ships, no doubt. Um, there wasn't really anything around, unfortunately. So, alright, let's think about what we can do. So, I definitely am going to need some some uh, armor for my ships and some decent weapons. I can go with ion beams, which are pretty good. Um, I can also do solar armor, which gives me energy while it also protects me. Uh, particle collider is really good for research, and I usually take it because I'm not in a situation like this. Um... We also have defensive flares for, I mean, they are, they do what they pretty much say for missiles and stuff. Um, plasma cannons are actually a pretty good deal. So let's go with plasma cannons. Because I'm going to build a ship that's going to be able to take some of these, these pirates out. Oh, that'd be awesome if they fought each other. Oh my god, they did! I don't think I've ever seen that. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes! Thank you, Crystal Fleet, because now I can go see what the hell that is. That was very awesome of them. Yeah, that sucks. And that's what happens when pirates end up in your... your oh, come on, they were... They were defending nothing, pretty much. That's actually a decent population planet, but there's no food per farmer, so that's going to be a pain in the ass. Alright, well... My luck streak continues. Let's push him out this way. Wait, 
Wait, what? I already thought it was destroyed. Right? It was destroyed already. So. Problem is, they're about to build a colony ship. Hmm. So let's do this. Let's put a raider there. Move it back into the back of the queue. So that way it doesn't complete, and when the ship does complete, it actually has a chance of destroying this pirate. Oh, great. Let's do this. It wants to fight my space base. Pirate invasion of Chull? You're not invading me. You're coming to die. See how it's maneuvering to avoid my... my shots? Pretty smart. Instead of coming at me straight on, it's actually <laughs> maneuvering around through these these cannon shots. I think those are actually artil artillery shots. It's gonna be a little harder to avoid the missiles, but look how far they've gotten without getting hit once. Oh, he's I'm impressed. I made it that far. Those are some new behaviors too that came in, in the last couple weeks. Finally do it. Zoom in. Just explosion shot. I'm gonna try to try to retreat. Boom! Get out of here. Nice talking to you. Alright, thank the owl walks for our uh, space base. Alright, let's continue our exploration. So, that actually means I can come back and um, bring my colony ship back up. And we'll come down and colonize the ancient androids planet. Oh, that's right, we need to address that. So, um, until we can get another freighter back up, we'll need that. But we also can probably buy this out. We can, so we'll buy it out. And that will provide us with a flat five production anyways. And let's build aeroponic farms. Take a look down here to see. We're going to build this raider because we need it. Keep an eye over here just to make sure that we're not running into trouble. Alright, so. We need to return to this field at a later time. Junk field over here is yet another event. As you can see, we've already got four. And confirm! So now we have our androids. And they, unfortunately... That's right, I forgot this doesn't have any farming. They consume food. I didn't realize they consumed food. Guess I never really paid attention to it. So let's build the aeroponic farm ASAP. Seven turns. We're going to need a freighter as soon as we're done with this one. Where's the hostile fleet? Where are you at? Alright. Oh, that's right, because that's where the fleet was that was trying to chase us down. Now we've got our first raider, which is good. And we've also explored Nadola. Yet again, a crappy planet. Pretty sure we went that way and we got intercepted. So let's go up here, since there doesn't seem to be anything there. There is something there, so we will divert. Come back this way instead. And for, oh, wrong one. Iadro, we will buy this before they all die. Awesome. Alright, so now they're not going to be dead. They're actually gaining one, but that's because the other guy died. Oh, poor filler. Um, they're really good at, as you can see, their, and their output as workers is increased over a regular person. Um, and this is also an ultra-rich planetary base, so... But there's a planet, there's a gravity penalty. 
So it all ends up being that my net production is 10. Which doesn't make any sense, actually. So we got... Oh, no, it does. No. 8 plus 14 is 22. Uh, a quarter of that would be 15. Oh, but then I'm getting pollution wages. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Uh, let's give them an automated rover bay so they can build stuff faster. And then we're going to have them do some cool stuff. I don't know what that's going to be yet. And Chular. Chular. He's going to build more. Uh, actually, we could build an aeroponics farm so that we can start making people do other stuff. Let's actually make them research. And we'll build another... Actually, we'll build a widow after that so that we've got a decent little navy that can fight off some of these pirates. Another crystal. Good god. And it's a giant fleet. Alright, so I'm definitely in hardcore need of a navy. We're gonna... No, there's just no way we can take these guys out. Look at all this... Man... <sighs> we're going to have to figure out something to do because we're going to need to build a pretty big fleet to take out any of these guys. We'll take these guys out because just the, the three, right? Yeah. One of them is a carrier there. Those are pretty humorous, even for the thirtieth time I've read them. Oh, there wasn't anybody there, that's crazy. I thought there was somebody guarding this, so let's take this wormhole. Let's see where it takes us. To Cylon. Anything in Cylon? Nope. Wow, okay. Obviously this game hates me. Uh this fleet's about to get uh, diverted back because there's no fuel and my best bet's to go back to that wormhole so I avoid all these pirates and stuff so I'm gonna do that awesome so the plasma cannons are ready and I will send him back this way before he runs out of fuel and so where are we at now um what should we consider? We do need some research, so that would be great to have. Research lab was plus one, one research, and then a five flat research bonus. And then we have Imperial University, which does three research per scientist. And then we have a research, like, ship module. Um, I'm going to do the research lab, because I really like the flat bonuses. That means you basically are getting it without having to divert any of your citizens to that particular field. And I'm not a big micromanager, so I don't like having to go back to each of the planets to, you know, divvy them up all the time. So I, I just, I get really bad at that. Um, they're not really, oh, look at that. Look at that. But it's not that good for food. Psychoactive flora. Let's see what Psychoactive Floor does. Plus 10% approval, but t negative 10% production. Oh, it's also a minor faction. How about that? And that's something that I'd like to show you, so we will take those crystals out. Alright, I'm surprised that going through that didn't end up showing me another race. Considering that there's like seven of us, I think I said means we only get like 10, 10 planets per race pretty much and I've definitely or 10 systems and there's definitely more than 10 systems here that I've scouted out let's take a look and see what our planets are doing 
Alright, oh, I have, I'm not building anything here? I thought I was. Huh. I thought I was building stuff. Alright, well, I should have been paying more attention. But that's like the story of my life. Um. Huh. We're gonna add some raiders to this increasing fleet. That's gonna be our thing. Because we're gonna need to make a decent fleet. We'll take these guys out first so that I can at least explore down there. That's actually a good thing to too, do too. We'll look to see what the best climate is. Oh. <laughs> There's literally not a single planet that I know of that's better than zero food per farmer. So we can do the minerals in that one trilithium, or the uh, Ugerman belt with the trilithium is, is eight production per worker, which is great, but um, man, I'd really like to actually have planets that do something worth a damn. He's on troll. And he should stay on troll. Alright. Awesome. So now we have Blaster Master Engineer. Um, he is a warrior, so he'll also be on the battlefields, but he also is a labor leader, which means his production is better than. Um, the other ones, and then we got ship. Alright, so let's hire him. Yes, astounding Mel, Mel, we've been hired to get it. I hope people get that. I really do. But this is an indication for future performance. Just point us to the shipyards and we'll do the rest. So we will assign him. Oops, wrong one. We'll assign him to the Eadra system because why not? Let's make that like our super production system. It could be. It can it can aspire to that. Alright, so we got a Chuck Raider here. Let's send this one down and meet up with my Chuck Raider. And now this guy's gonna be refueled, three eighty. We'll send him all the way that way. And the widow's also been built, so let's take a look and see what else they can do. Maybe we'll do the fleet academy so that we can still keep building some more ships out this way. Um, we'll also divvy up some of these guys into research so we can produce or uh, figure out research lab faster. Alright, so yeah, we'll just take a look at that. Um, yeah, I think actually this is probably a good place to end this episode because there's a lot about to happen and I want to leave you guys on the edge of your seat. <laughs> so um, what we'll do is we'll finish up the fleet congregation here, the fleet production, and then head down south to the pirates and take them all out. And we'll make our way up towards these crystal guys to show you the minor race in the uh, next episode. Uh, hopefully this is giving you a good taste of what the gameplay is like. I really enjoy it. I think you guys are going to as well. It's in a great state, and it's only coming out in a couple weeks. So uh, stay tuned for episode two, which will probably be later on this week. Thanks, guys.